How would you like to know that a certain person is from the people of Jannah? Now, like if I tell you, this guy is from the people of Jannah. Can we say that? As our aqidah, as people of Ahl-Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we cannot confirm to anyone that he is 100% from the people of Jannah or he is 100% from the people of the Hellfire. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave us a sign. In many ahadith, I will mention three of them. Rasulullah sallallahu said, soon you will be able to find out who are the people of Jannah and who are the people of the hellfire. They said, how ya Rasulullah? He said, with praise and condemnation, you are Allah's witnesses upon one another. That's the first hadith. Second hadith, a janazah passed by and the Sahaba praised the deceased. So Rasulullah said, it has became certain, it became certain, it became certain. Then another janazah passed by and the Sahaba condemned the guy. They said bad things about the deceased. Rasulullah said, wajabat, wajabat, wajabat. He said the same exact thing. He said, Ya Rasulullah, the first one we praised, you say wajabat. And the second one we, we condemned and you said wajabat. He said, the first one that you praised, wajabat lahu jannah The one that you praised in the beginning, Jannah became a must became due to him. And the one you condemned, Jahannam, hellfire, became due to him or to her. Third hadith, final hadith. The people of Jannah are the ones whom Allah fill their ears with the praise of people while they are listening. And the people of the hellfire are the people whom Allah fill their ears with condemnation, people's condemnation, and they are listening. Now, if you look at it, all the three ahadith, what is that sign that indicate that a person who's walking among us, living among us, is from the people of Jannah or from the people of the hellfire? It is the reputation among the community. What do people say about you? And don't get that confused by doing things to please people. No, 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 no. The amal will be multiplied by zero. Naturally, by nature, you love to help. By nature, you always visit the sick. By nature, you look where is there's a janazah. By nature, whoever is tight in his finances, you go and support him. By nature, you love to do this a'mal because Allah ordered you, number one, they bring you close to Allah. And this is, this becomes, look at the last hadith. Rasulullah said, Allah filled his ears with praise while he's listening. When Allah fills his ear with the praise, he is obviously listening. Why is the word and he's listening? I mean, it's filled with his ears. He's obviously listening. This is for exaggeration of how good is that person that his reputation became so good that wherever he goes, people talk about him. This man, Wallahi, Ya Allah, I remember when I needed this, he was there for me. When I moved, he came to help me. When I was in the hospital, he visited me. When I was going through hardship, he was the first one who came and put money in the bank for me. He is always there for me or the other kind and subhanallah we can name so many from our hukam <laughs> you know who's always you know you could you hear this guy cursed him this guy cursed him everywhere you go they are cursing that president they're cursing that king they're cursing that ruler because of what they have done to their people their their ears themselves is filled with the condemnation of the people and they're hearing it on a daily basis subhan rasulullah the hadith is blunt straightforward the people of the hellfire whom their reputation in the community, in the country, in the state, in the village is evil. Everybody's, oh, brother, let's go visit that guy. Oh, please leave me alone. I don't want to even see him. Or the, on the contrary, you know, oh, subhanallah, wallahi, yani, anytime you need this brother, you, you find him there. You need it, you have a problem, go to this brother. He will always help you, subhanallah. So, ya akhwan. This is an opportunity. This is a great opportunity from Rasulullah to know, am I from the people of Jannah or am I from the people of the hellfire? Of course, there's nothing called guaranteed because it all the amal are by the way they end, right? So, but I can, inshallah ta'ala, always help in any form. Be generous, be kind, be loving, be caring, especially to your family, especially to your spouse, especially to your parents. Huh? And then anybody in need, be the first one. Do not wait for your brother who told you already that he lost his job. Do not wait for him to tell you, brother, I'm in need. Yani somebody lost his job and he's been out of work for three, four months. What do you expect? You by yourself. By yourself. This is the true brother. Wallahi, a brother came to me the other day and he said, Staz, remember a 
few years ago when this, 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 and this happened. Of course, of course I remember. He said, brother so-and-so, Allah, he came to me and without me noticing, he put in my pocket $5,000 and he left. I said, since that day, he said, Wallahi, even though I gave it back to him, uh -huh, but I will never forget what he has done to me. Never. Subhanallah. So these are the brothers that, you know, you're always mentioning them with good. Anytime that uh, you need help, who's the first person who comes to your mind? That's the brother we're talking about. Are you that brother? When people are going through hardship or they need any kind of help, are you the person that comes to mind or are you the last person that come to mind? Because you're going to give so many excuses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the people of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from the hellfire. Assalamu alaikum wa And this is for the first four things that I would mention. He said, I heard the messenger of Allah saying, Wajabat mahabbati lil mutahabina fi, wal mutajalisina fi, wal mutazawirina fi, wal mutabadilina fi. Four categories of people. If you want Allah to love you, at least try to be a part of these four categories. He said the first one, first one, Allah said, Allah made wajib upon himself that he will love everyone that loves another person for the sake of Allah. I repeat, Allah made wajib upon himself that he will love anyone who loved another person for the sake of Allah. Let me ask you this question. How many people truly that you love him or her for the sake of Allah? Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi musnadi ahmad al hadith Umar bin Khattab, look what he said about the categories of people. He said on the day of Yawm al Qiyamah, there would be people who are so close to Allah, so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Anbiya, the Nabis, and the Shaheed. And you know what Nabi is, and you know what Shaheed is. Nabi is someone who is guided by Allah. Shaheed is someone who gave his soul for the sake of Allah. The Nabi and the Shaheed, would, they would say to themselves, what did they do to deserve that status? They are that close to Allah. What did they do to deserve that status? So one of the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, what did they do? The Messenger of Allah. He said, there are people who loved one another only for the sake of Allah without any blood ties and without any business transaction. Just for the sake of Allah. Find four or five people that you really love them for the sake of Allah. That's the first category. The second category, he said, Those who were set together for the sake of Allah. For the sake of Allah, not for political reasons, not for business transactions, not for social events, not for a wedding, not for a chit chat, but you sit together for the sake of Allah. You know, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he used to say, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, after he finished the work of the government, he used to bring righteous individuals and used to say, let us sit and remember Allah. Let us remember Akhirah. Those were the people who deserved his love. So that's the second. Third category of people, وَالْمُتَزَاوِرِينَ fi People who you visit them for the sake of Allah. Not that you from the Jama'at Tabligh, you know, you know, you know, you go to Tabligh and you just visit Muslims. No, someone you say, you know, I know where Sayyid al Qadid lives. I don't want business from him. I don't want a favor from him. I just want to visit, visit him for the sake of Allah. I'm visiting. No other business, no other intention, only for the sake of Allah. Do you have that? Then you're good. The fourth category he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wal Mutabadilina fi, those who will give for the sake of Allah. Give. And not only money, but sometimes you just yourself give of your time for the sake of Allah. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Wala an amshi ma'a akhin fi haja, ahabba ilayya min an atakifa fi masjidi hada shahara. He said, For me to help my brother, you know, one little thing is more beloved to me than doing i'tikaf in my masjid. So that's number four. Number five, Ibadullah, is doing nawafil. If you want Allah to love you, 
do nawafil, as much nawafil. Nawafil, the messenger of Allah said in a hadith in Ma'roof, very famous hadith, hadith, man ada li waliyan. At the end, he said, at the end, he said, nothing is more beloved to me that I ask of my servant than to him to perform the fara'id. And then he said, but if my servant keep perform, performing nawafil, which means voluntary prayers, voluntary sadaqah, voluntary zakah, what you call salah, then Allah said, then I will love him. So if you pray your nafil, Allah will love you. If you pray your witr, Allah will love you. If you pray your sunnah, Allah will love you. If you do fasting Thursday and other days, Allah will love you. That is number five. Number six, number six is for you to be always ta'ib ila Allah, always repenting and going back to Allah. Because Allah said in the Quran, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin. Allah loves those who always repent. Not only when they sin, but always repent. Always repent. And the last one, Ya Ibadullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all of us. The last one, the Messenger of Allah said, and the Ahabu Nasi illallah, he said, the most beloved people in the sight of Allah, and Fa'uhum Linas, those who will benefit others most. So if you want Allah to love you, don't discriminate. Don't say, I will only help Somalis. I will only help Pakistani or Indians. I will only help Syrians because I am of that, you know, race. Don't do that. Why would I only cry for my own people? But the Messenger of Allah said, if you want Allah to love you most, then benefit everyone. Everyone.